All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to end up looking at, we sort of finished up a topic that I should have had in the last one and I, I forgot to have, but it's really, really easy in terms of doing calculations with. Um, if you have alternating current that ends up going into a solenoid that is interlaced with another solenoid, so you have one solenoid here, another one that's sitting on top of it, right? It's not connected, so they're insulated in between, but otherwise they end up occupying the same area. Uh, if they do occupy the same area, then it turns out that the it induces an EMF on the other side. The reason it does that is you end up setting up, again, your current that goes through the solenoid ends up inducing a magnetic field through it. We talked that's, you know, B equals V0 and I. Uh, and because your current is changing because it's alternating current, then your magnetic field is changing. So then through the other one, you end up having a flux and uh, the flux then is changing. So a changing flux induces an EMF, and the EMF then is produced on the other side. So it's not connected. It's that the, the, the energy gets transferred from the one that comes in, we end up calling the one that comes in primary, to the one that leaves, which is called the secondary. And the equation relates it is just the quotient of your uh, of the primary uh, primary voltage divided by the number of turns in the primary coil is equal to the voltage in the secondary divided by the number of turns in the secondary coil. So in this situation you're able to change what the voltage is at a transformer for if you so if you have one that needs to increase you end up having more turns on the part that leaves on the secondary if you want it to go the other way, you have a high voltage and you want it to go to a low voltage, you have many more turns in the primary and fewer ones in the secondary. It turns out that with good, uh, with being well built, you end up losing a, quite a small amount of energy in this transfer. So, uh, so it's an efficient way to be able to, to do this. The reason why you'd want to is that, uh, the amount of power loss in a power line is equal to the square of the current, RMS current, times the, re the resistance of the wire. So the smaller the current you get, the less power loss you get. So if you end up having a high amount of voltage, the power is voltage times current. So that number isn't going to change conservation of energy. But the voltage times the, in times the input current will equal the voltage times the output current. So if you want the current coming out to be small, then you have to have the voltage be high. So, you, that's, so in that situation, it's called a step-up transformer, where you increase the voltage by, set, by setting the, the, the coils that way. Um, and uh, some, so then uh, you step it down on the other side for safety reasons, and you say, well, in that situation, uh, the why don't you make, you know, so it's typically 100,000 volts or so, volt, uh, and you say, well, why don't you make it a million or 10 million or whatever, because it's just how many loops of wire you have. That shouldn't be a problem. In principle, it's not, but what you start to have happen is in that, that you get dielectric breakdown into the air, because we remember we talked about dielectric breakdown a little while back. So in that situation, instead of the current going down the wire to your, customers, you get such high electric fields uh, being produced that start to spark off into the air around it, which is going not where you want it to go. So again, you'll lose energy to the environment. Uh, so that's the reason why transformers uh, are important. That's, that's what they're good for. Uh, and the details of the calculation are a little bit, it's not terribly hard, but it's a little bit painful. So I put those in the supplementary area. So if you're curious about where this equation that looks really super simple comes from, it's kind of complicated stuff to get there, but again, the, the numbers come out to be nice and easy. All right, so now we transition into electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and uh, Faraday's law ends up telling us that an oscillating magnetic field induces an electric field. And it turns out 
that it's symmetric. So it's also true that oscillating electric field induces a magnetic field. So they end up uh, going to going uh, together that way. Uh, and Maxwell's equations is the complete formula that includes both of those. Because of time constraints, we're not going to end up looking explicitly at Faraday's law it's, uh, at, at uh, Maxwell's equations. It's not that they aren't important. It's just that we don't have enough time. So, uh, so if you're curious about it, you can go in and read that in the text. Uh, but uh, what we do need to talk about is if we have changing electric field, we can produce a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field produces a electric field. So if I have an electric field that produces a changing magnetic field, that changing magnetic field produces changing electric field and vice versa. So we end up having a scenario where now we can get what's called a wave traveling wave, where they end up interacting with each other in order to cause, uh, cause energy and momentum to be transferred. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, in terms of understanding a little bit about that, uh, if we combine some of the, the constants we had way back when, uh, we have epsilon zeros related to electric stuff and mu zeros related to magnetic stuff. If we take one divided by the square root of epsilon zero mu zero, you run through the arithmetic, that quantity has units of meters per second, units of speed. And the value that you get out is 299,792,458 meters per second. And that, that also turns out, whenever you set up the equations that couple these together, it turns out to be the speed that the waves are would be produced if you have these oscillating electric and magnetic fields that end up sort of mutually causing each other. Um, and we call them that stuff because it has to do with electric oscillations and magnetic oscillations simultaneously. We call it an electromagnetic wave, an EM wave. Uh, and we're going to end up looking at various things about EM waves uh, as we move forward. Uh, that's one thing that I did not include, which... Uh, I will probably update this a little bit at the end of this, uh, that we do need to talk a little bit about uh, what kinds of things are electromagnetic waves. So we'll end up doing, I'll append this uh, as another uh, lecture notes. In the meantime, uh, we've got oscillating electric fields and oscillating magnetic fields. Uh, that it turns out that Whenever your electric field is locally at a maximum, so is your magnetic field magnitude. Uh, electric fields and magnetic fields are always perpendicular to each other with uh, electromagnetic radiation. Um, so, uh, and but we will, uh, that in general, uh, the picture I drew there, it turns out that's a picture of what's called a, uh, uh, it, it, it's a, uh, uh, polarized electromag electromagnetic radiation, linearly polarized. Uh, in general, your electric field can end up being co linear combinations of these things, so they can end up spiraling is one of the ways that they can add together. And when it's spiraling in one particular way, we end up talking about it as being circularly polarized light. So if you've ever had organic chemistry, or you've talked about that in a biology-ish course, uh, that you that's where that, in, that concept comes from. We're not going to at all worry about that. We're going to end up keeping things simpler. Uh, the uh, electric and magnetic fields are always perpendicular, and they're all, the magnitudes are always related. Your electric field magnitude is equal to the speed of light times your, uh, the magnetic field, and that 299 million number is called the speed of light, uh, because electromagnetic radiation is light in generally. So, uh, and in chemistry you probably already saw this, but again I will end up appending a little thing at the end where we talk about uh, types of electromagnetic radiation. All right, uh, then 
we will move into uh, uh, Poynings vector in the next one.